Section 00 of the Arabian Nights Entertainments, Volume 1. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Tim Gregory. The Arabian Nights Entertainments, Volume 1, by Anonymous. Translated by Dr. Jonathan Scott, Section 00. The Publisher's Preface. This, the Aldean edition of the Arabian Nights Entertainments, forms the first four volumes of a proposed series of reprints of the standard works of fiction which have appeared in the English language. It is our intention to publish the series in an artistic way, well illustrating a text typographically as perfect as possible. The text in all cases will be carefully chosen from approved editions. The series is intended for those who appreciate well-printed and illustrated books, or who are in want of a handy and handsome edition of such works to place upon their bookshelves. The exact origin of the tales, which appear in the Arabic as The Thousand and One Nights, is unknown. The Caliph Harun al-Rashid, who figures in so lifelike a manner in many of the stories, was a contemporary of the Emperor Charlemagne, and there is internal evidence that the collection was made in the Arabic language about the end of the 10th century. They undoubtedly convey a picturesque impression of the manners, sentiments, and customs of Eastern medieval life. The stories were translated from the Arabic by M. Galland and first found their way into English in 1704, when they were retranslated from M. Galland's French text and at once became exceedingly popular. This process of double translation had great disadvantages. It induced Dr. Jonathan Scott, Oriental Professor, to publish in 1811 a new edition, revised and corrected from the Arabic. It is upon this text that the present edition is formed. It will be found free from that grossness which is unavoidable in a strictly literal translation of the original into English, and which has rendered the splendid translations of Sir R. Burton and Mr. J. Payne quite unsuitable as the basis of a popular edition, though at the same time stamping the works as the two most perfect editions for the students. The scholarly translation of Lane, by the too strict and adherence to oriental forms of expression and somewhat pedantic rendering of the spelling of proper names, is found to be tedious to a very large number of readers, attracted by the rich imagination, romance, and humor of these tales. End of section 00. Recording by Tim Gregory, Seattle, Washington.